Liang Sicheng and Lin Huiyin were both scholars. In their lifetimes, they were married to each other, but it was only many years after their deaths that they became widely known. Both Liang Sicheng and Lin Huiyin came from highly educated families. Yet people talk mostly about Lin Huiyin's beauty, and about Liang Sicheng's obsession with an ancient city. They are the subjects, together and separately, of numerous stories. The world-renowned historian John King Fairbank once lived in a forest in the northeastern United States. Fairbank was the man who pioneered the study of modern and contemporary Chinese history in the United States, and it was here. That Fairbank wrote many of his major works. It is also where he and his wife Wilma hosted their close friends Liang Sicheng and Lin Huiyin. I wanted to show you、um, my father's study. These files, and in many of the books and scrapbooks around here, that we discovered a lot of the um, um, some of the correspondence with the Liangs, and some of these are from Phyllis Li,、um, Lin Weiyin, and some are from Liang Sicheng, 1934. And it's、um, very cute. She calls it the deluxe edition,、um, hand drawn, hand typed, and. The text was by my mother, and the photographs were by Liang Sicheng, and my father apparently took some of these photos as well.、Um, this is a particularly wonderful item that we discovered. I discovered when、um, in the back room of my parents' house in Cambridge, and I always wondered what it was, but I never had been looked into it. And so,、um, but this is a wonderful discovery. And apparently, it was a gift from Lin Weiyin to my mother when they were leaving China in 1935, and it was、uh, full of fabrics that are still in very good condition. I have some beautiful robes. I'll show you later. Yeah, I'll show you. It's beautiful. Exquisite. So.、Um, Um, and inside the box was also delightful to discover that there was a picture of my mother and Lin Weiyin when they would first started their friendship in the 30s. Dearest Wilma, I'm sending the red leather chest over to you. This red beauty really is quite sweet too. It has been in my Lin family for 68 years, and I'm happy that it's going abroad to yours to stay for the rest of its life, till one day it will really be an antique. In the early 1930s, a chance meeting between two young couples in Beijing initiated an exchange of letters and visits that lasted a lifetime. Dearest darling, very dear Wilma and John, blush for all concern here. What wonderful bunch of males that has just arrived! But my dearest darling, idiotic friends, why, why, why on earth didn't you write via Siberian on it? Do you realize that your last three letters each taken fifty days to come? Along with the photographs in the boxes, are yellowed sheets of letter paper. The bold handwriting gives the impression the letters were written with a sense of urgency. These pages reveal a story, one that was only recently uncovered. While I am typing this, begging for books, so much, so much happened. We don't know how to begin telling. Dearest、anyway. Wei, this is not the letter. 
I have been going to write since last year. My dearest Atlanta. Phyllis and Suchong. Phyllis, you darling, to welcome me with such a rush of... This correspondence between China and the United States lasted nearly 20 years. But then in December 1948, on the eve of the liberation of the Chinese capital, it abruptly to stopped. To write freely to you all in the USA without postal service difficulties or whatever you... Relations between China and the United States were frozen for more than 20 years. The stream of letters between Lin Huiyin and the Fairbanks was stopped. In 1972, John and Wilma Fairbank returned to China. But by then, their friends Liang Sicheng and Lin Huiyin had both passed away. Beijing, which had once been like a second home to the Fairbanks, was now a strange city to them. Wilma, by now in her 70s, spent the next 10 years returning to her old haunts and tracking down old friends. She was researching a book about Liang Sicheng and Lin Huiyin. Both Sicheng and Hui were children of famous fathers and distinguished families. Through them and their friends, many doors began to open for us 